Today on The Joy of Editing, it is Photoshop Beta Generative Fill. This is new and exciting. We're going to take a look at it today. I'm going to give you a few little tips and tricks. You don't want to miss this one. This is a game changer. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Today it's Photoshop Beta's generative fill. There's a lot of videos about it out there right now, but I'm going to give you my take on it and I'll show you some things you might not have seen on other videos. So you want to watch the entire video. Now, in order for you to try out the new generative fill, you need to have the latest version of Photoshop beta. And as you can see right here, I'm using Photoshop 24.6.0. I'm pretty sure this is the latest release. So you got to have that. If you don't have Photoshop beta, you can get it. It's very easy. Just come to your creative cloud and come under apps, make sure you click on apps and come down to beta, click on beta apps and you'll find it right here. As you can see, mine's up to date and it's going to let you download it right here. So it's very important that you download that first. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now you'll notice up here, you see, this is my contextual toolbar and you find this in the latest version of just the regular Photoshop 2023. Now, the nice thing about this toolbar is it gives you a lot of cool information. There's a lot of videos out there going over all this stuff, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time there. But you can move this around. You see this bar right here? You can move it and drag it. But the thing that I like to do is, because anytime you make a selection, it's going to pop around where your selection's at. Do you see the three dots right here? Click on these three dots and click pin the bar position. That way it'll stay in one location for you. And then you can move it around to anywhere you want it to go. But I like to keep mine right up here. But it's very important that you have pin bar position checked on. The more I use this toolbar, the more I like it. I'll be doing some fun things to this image. But first off, I want to get rid of this flower right here. Now notice this toolbar up here. As soon as I start to make a selection around this flower that I want to get rid of, just like that, now it says generative fill up here. So that's important. Anytime you make a selection, you're going to get this option. And then all you need to do is click on generative fill. Now what you can do is you can type in a prompt if you want to put something in here. But all I want to do is get rid of this flower and let her shirt show through. So I would click on generate. And it takes a little bit of time for this to happen, but I think we're going to have a problem here. And I'm going to give you a tip right off the bat here. So we just have to wait for this. I'll just talk and try to fill in space. See what it says? It says the generated images were removed because they violate our guidelines. What? Well, I think it thinks that maybe I want to remove her clothes. I don't know what it's thinking, okay? It's AI. It has a mind of its own. So here's a little tip for you. Click on generative fill again. And this time, type in remove, okay? And then click generate. And I find when you do this, this will solve that issue from popping up there, telling you that, you know, you have a guideline issue there. So we'll just wait a little bit longer here and see what it does. It's almost there. And there it is. See what it did? Now, you'll notice over here in my properties panel, I have three images. So they always give you three images that you can pick from. So here's the first one, which looks really good. Here is the second one. Not bad. And here is the third one. And you know, I think I like the third one the best. So you have options. Now you can go ahead and generate again if you want to, but look how great of a job that is done removing those out of focus flowers. Are we having fun yet? I know I am. Now these flowers up here bother me. So what I'm going to do is lasso around all these out of focus flowers up in here. And let's see if we can just fill that in with generative fill. I have a hard time saying that. Let's click on generate and we'll just wait for it and see what happens. Maybe I'll start speeding the video up just so you don't have to wait for this because it takes about 15 to 20 seconds because this is doing this all up in the cloud. Yeah, and that did a really good job. If I don't like these guys right in here, I can circle around here with my lasso tool. And you don't have to be that accurate, which is really nice. And then we'll click on generate to fill again, and I'll click generate and see what happens. And look at that. It's done a great job. And now let's do some playing. I want to change her hat. You think I can change her hat? I'm going to get my lasso tool here. And I'm just going to draw a loose selection around this hat. See how I'm moving into her face a little bit? 
and coming around like this. Maybe I want the hat to be a little bit bigger. So there we go. So let's click on generative fill and let me type in fashion hat and see what we get. Let's click generate. Okay, there's a fashion hat and it looks really good. Let's try the second hat. I like that too. And let's try the third hat. Now I'm going to go with the third hat. I really like the third hat. Now you see these little uh, dots of light that were coming through from her other hat. We don't want those in there. I tried generative fill to fill this in. It didn't do a good job. And so we have a remove tool, this new remove tool. I'm going to click on it. And I have sample all layers checked on here and remove after each stroke. What I need to do is put a blank pixel there right above there. And what we're going to do is just, I'm going to make my brush smaller here. And I'm just going to paint over these light dots on here that were caused from that hat and see if we can remove those and look they come right out I'm gonna make this brush a little bit smaller and like I said this tool definitely worked better than generative fill there's even a little circle right here let me get rid of these guys right here yeah that looks better right there there's a little dot right there I'm gonna get rid of it I love this new remove tool and don't think that this remove tool is now obsolete because it's not. Sometimes generative fill does not do what you want it to do and you need these other tools. Now let me see if I can use the remove tool to remove this. I know I can do a good job with the uh, generative fill, but let's see what this does here. And that did a pretty good job, but I don't like this little area here. I'm going to do a command or control Z to undo it. And now let me just lasso around here. Just give this a lasso right around here. And you notice I'm going into the blouse here a little bit. Click on generative fill and see what kind of a job this does. And that looks much better. I love the rounded edge there. Now we have two other choices. Here's the second choice. Don't like that as much. And here's the third choice. I'm going to go with the first choice. I think that looks the best. Let's continue to play because this is a lot of fun. Let's put an earring on her. How about a fashion earring? So I'm going with my lasso tool and drawing a selection right around here like so. This way it could decide to give a bigger earring here. So we'll see what it gives us. So I'm going to type on generative fill and I'll type in fashion earring and we'll click generate and see what we get. Okay, look at that. That looks pretty cool. That's the first earring. Here's the second earring. Not bad. Here's the third earring. That's kind of cool too. I think I'll go with the, well, let's go with the second earring. I think it looks really nice. Now, here's a little tip for you. Say that earring looks too big for you. You can transform it. So you could do a commander control T and you'll see the transform box comes up here. And I can make this a lot smaller to maybe that size and then drag it into position. And I realize that's not going to work out quite right there. So we're going to go ahead and accept that transformation. But what we need to do is come back and we'll generate again. And it'll generate three new earrings. Notice that I hit generate from within the properties and not the contextual toolbar. Because if I would have used the toolbar, it would have made a new layer. And now you notice I have a lot smaller earring. So there's one. Here's another one. Oh, I like that one. And here is another one. I think I like that one. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can really see how natural that looks. So that's that earring. That is this one. And here is this one. So pretty cool, right? And I think, nah, I think I'm going to go with that one. Now, I think this image would look nice if I extended the bottom. So to do that, you can type C to get your crop tool or click this button on the toolbar. And right now I'm in ratio. I have no numbers in here, so I can just basically do a free form type crop. If you have numbers in here, you can click clear and then click reset. So I'm just going to pull right down on the bottom here to add a little more space down here. And now we can accept that crop by clicking on the check. And now I'll grab my marquee tool. I'll just type M to get up my marquee tool. And what you want to do is when you select here, leave a little bit of the image in the selection. So that helps the AI to know how to figure this out. So I'm going to go like right like so. And now we can click on generative fill and you could type in a prompt, but I don't want to. I just want to see what AI can come up with. So I'll click on generate and see what happens. All right. And there we go. Look at that. That looks really amazing. Now, remember, we have three choices. Here's the first choice. Here's the second choice, and here is the third choice. 
And you know what? I think I like the third choice, so we're going to go with that. And let's also go ahead and extend the right side. So I'm going to type C to get my crop tool again and just drag this out to about here. Go ahead and click on the check to accept that crop. And now type M to get my marquee tool again. And again, we're going to include a little bit of the image right like that on the edge. And now we're going to click on generative fill. We'll just see what it can come up with. So click on generate. Okay, that looks much better. Let's see what the second image looks like. Okay, and the third image. I think I like the first one, so we'll go with that. One more thing. I'm going to type L to get my lasso tool. I'm going to put a nice big bracelet right here on her wrist or arm. Let's click on generative fill and I'll type fashion bracelet and we'll type generate and see what we can get. Okay, that's not bad. Let's try the second one. Here's the, oh, that's pretty cool. And here is the third. So which one do you like? It's either between the third or the second. I think I'll go with the second. So this image started out looking like this. And now it looks like this, all with the help of generative fill. And now for something a little bit different. And now for a bonus. And I don't know if you knew Photoshop Beta could do this or not. I've yet to see a video on it. So I'm going to introduce it to you. And if you want to see some videos like this, some tutorials in the future, let me know. I start out with a blank canvas. I made a blank canvas in Photoshop. I selected the entire canvas and I used generative fill and put a prompt in and said, a field and a barn watercolor painting. And this is what I got. And I thought, oh, that's cool. And I saw this fence post here and I thought, well, what if I use the lasso tool and draw in two rails with the lasso tool? So just like this, you know, there's one rail and here is another rail like that. And then I clicked on generative fill and typed fence rails and click generate. And this is what I got. So I thought that's pretty cool. So I figured I'm going to keep going. So with my lasso tool in another area, let me click on this next layer right here. I just drew a lasso here and said a windmill. And I got that different variations. And I picked the one I liked the best. And then I said, well, let me see what else I can do. So here's my next layer. And I said, cows grazing. I just drew a little lasso around this area and said, cows grazing. And I had different variations. And then I kept on going. And then on this layer, I said, how about a tractor? And it missed part of the guy. I said, a man on a tractor. And so then I circled around this area with a lasso tool. And I removed that area using generative fill. And I thought, oh, that looks okay. It kind of looks like a guy. It is a watercolor painting. It's not high in detail. And so I made another layer. And this time I added some wildflowers. So I just lassoed like real loosely around here. And I thought to balance it out, let's put some on this side. And so I added some over here as well. And so it started out looking like this. And after I added all the elements, it looks like this. Now, if you would like to see some tutorials on how you can do this kind of stuff, I didn't know you could do it till I experimented. Let me know in the comments section below. Well, there it is, everyone. That was a first look at Photoshop Beta's generative fill. This is truly the future. Hey, if you enjoyed this first look video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.